of one through eight here. Read yours off here before we get rolling. Uh, I have at number eight, Texas A&M. Number seven, Missouri. Six, Tennessee. Five, LSU. Four, Alabama. Three, Texas. Two, Ole Miss. And number one, Georgia. Basically the same to some extent, Joe. The only difference that we basically have is some got some teams here, some teams there. But at number eight, I have Oklahoma. Number seven, Missouri. Number six, Tennessee. Number five, Texas. Number four, LSU. Number three, Alabama. Number two, Ole Miss. And number one, Georgia. Joe, I have Texas A&M at nine. You have them at eight. Why do you have them there? I'll tell, and why do I, I'll say why I have them at nine. I'm super bullish on the defensive line and what they're going to do on the defensive side of the football. Shamar Turner, Nick Scourton, I think are going to be just total menaces, impossible to keep up with. They're going to play off of each other uh, very nicely. I, I'm a big Connor Weigman fan. I, I think that Connor Weigman. Wigman. This week, is it Wigman? White, they got on my ass and calling it Wigman. It's, it's Wigman. Yeah, Con- whatever. I'm a big Connor Wiegman fan. I think that he has every tool to be a first round pick this year if he plays well. I know that you're losing Evan Stewart. I think that receiver room is still pretty strong. It sucks that you lose Ruben Owens and and that kind of comes into play after I put this list together. But if you have a top four quarterback in the conference and you have an elite defensive line, you were just propping up that Auburn D-line this Texas A&M D line is better than that one. They've got two mm-hmm. high NFL draft picks that they're going to have. Ahead of Auburn. Right. They're, they're well-rounded. Not well-rounded enough to be in the top five, but well-rounded enough to be in the top eight. All right. I'm going to say this. It's going to get clipped. People are going to hate me for it. I, I don't care. At what point are we logo looking with A&M? I don't think we are. I think we are to some extent. I, I, I mean, Joe, we you have them at eight. I have them at nine. I, I, I mean, we're basically splitting hairs of them being seven and four or seven and five, eight and four. And when we look at that, okay, if they have a top four quarterback in the in the conference, mm-hmm. their D line is who we think or we think that it is. Mike Elko has the production we think he can have then they're not going to be a number 19. Then they've underperformed. Well, well but this, wait, wait, but that's why I have them at number eight, is that they have one of the better offensive lines in the conference, one of the best defensive lines in the conference, and one of the best quarterbacks in the conference. It so is are they better year, than Missouri? I almost debated putting them ahead of Missouri. Are I they think better than Tennessee? For a first-year head – no, they're not better than Tennessee. For a first-year okay. head coach, there is now room for error by putting them at eight. That's the way that I'm looking at this. So, Texas eight and four. Yeah, I think that they go eight and four, which is good. That's a good record for your first year for a head coach with everything that they just went through with Jimbo. They got picked apart in the portal. Well, they also added a lot in the portal, too. I, I'm really intrigued to see how Mike Elko does year one in the SEC. You know, like I I, I don't know if I, I'm all in on on Klein, their OC. I, I like him a lot. I, I think mm-hmm. that he's innovative. But I think that instead of in the Big 12, when you can go east and west in the SEC, you got to go north and south. I don't like this jet motion. I don't like these outside stuff. Like you couldn't run away from your defense. And there are a lot of defense in here in this league with serious speed, man. Serious speed. Uh, look, I know that everybody's high on Connor Weigman. Can I? Uh, here's my hot take on him. I got. I I think the kid is very talented. I actually think he can make every throw. I think he's athletic in the pocket. I think he can run. Yeah. Can I see it for a year? Well, it's not even. It's an injury thing for him. You know, it, it, and he. We can't act Your like it. Ability is availability. But okay, but we can't act like his injury history is something that is been consistent. I mean, he he stepped well, let in. Let me ask you this: He's going into year three. He's been a multi-time starter. Have you seen him in in crunch time? What does he do with the game on the line? And, and, and if that game is on the line, does he turn a ball over the, in a game that they could win? Like, I ask all these people questions. What's the difference? I mean, 
There is a difference between him and Brock Vandergriff, as an example. Yeah, there's a lot more uncertainty with Vandergriff than there is. No doubt, but there's not much. Yeah, there is. Weigman's never one started four four games. The other hasn't started a game. Four games is not massive amounts of experience. Yeah, I I understand that, but also one guy is also with a new team. He's in a new situation. Fair. So is both of them are. Was Klein there last year? By the way, this is his third offensive coordinator in in three years. I I don't know. I don't I don't think it's. I'm not going to be the one who who drags Weigman. I'm. I think that I'm not dragging. What about I know you're. I know. I know. No. No. I know. I know you're not. But I'm not going to. I'm going to look at this with the most optimistic outlook. And well, and that's the what I'm season. asking. I'm trying to look at it with the most optimistic glasses that I can. Everybody wants to beef him up. And I'm asking, can he be available for you? We'll have to see. What is he doing crunch time? You're going to have to wait and see. All right, Joe, let's go to Missouri. The Missouri Tigers. This one's going to be longer than I expected. No doubt it is. Missouri. Do you have a show um, after this? Yes, I do. Okay. (laughs) I'm just checking. I know that last time we we didn't have Well, we got 13 minutes to get to 17, so let's get moving. Okay. Uh, Missouri. Mizzou, if there's a team I had to pick that could tumble the most, it's probably them. Defensively, it's just massive, massive question marks as we did in the preview. Replacing two important defensive backs, defensive linemen, linebackers that were premier players. I am very, very high on, though, that I think that this offense is maybe top three in the conference. Luther Burden is unbelievable, and Brady Cook comes back with a ton of experience improving he doesn't need to be air you out, beat you over the top. Get the ball to Luther Burden, let him go to work. Missouri schedule is just so light. Sorry. They're, Joe, they're going to probably be 10-2, and 9-3 and three at worst. Mm-hmm. And they're going to be on the border, a borderline playoff playoff team. It, it just it is what it is. It's too light. They, don't, they play Dookie Steak and Dookie Water weeks one and weeks two. Doesn't matter. They're going to win them. Yeah. And so – I mean, Joe, they, they got a couple of big games here. Can they beat Bama? Yeah, Oklahoma, can they beat them? There are, there are some tough games they got in there. Here's the truth. I don't think anybody in the country or in this conference has anybody that can stop Luther Burton. If I'm no. being holy, maybe Georgia does, but not even Georgia. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say that Georgia does. I mean, unless Malachi Starks is covering him. No, I don't think anyone does. I don't think anyone does. I think they're 10-2. and two. And if that and if a ten and two team is at seven, then we got something rolling here. But mm. I, I I think power rankings having them at seven, it is what it is from the both of us. Joe, they're going to be a borderline playoff team based off of their schedule. Tennessee at six, I think you have them at five. What your thoughts on the Volunteers? Tennessee, um, I'm buying in on the Nico hype, and when you have potentially the first overall pick on defense, that can't go unnoticed. Their defense has gradually improved over the last couple of seasons. They didn't really put anyone out into the NFL or really lose any big-name guys to the transfer portal except for Tyler Barron. I I think that they could just continue to gradually improve. And if Nico looks as strong as he did, which is poised to making the right decisions against a very confusing Iowa defense, the way that he looked in that bowl game, everybody's going to be on watch for, for what Tennessee does. So... Two premier players at important positions. It's hard not to buy in there. And their O-line. Their O-line's fantastic. It is very, very good. E-M-I-I. E-M-I. Just say Nico. Just say Nico. Just say no, Nico. No, I it out. E-M-I of a lava. Em a lava. If you have to. I had to sound it out. I wrote it down. I finally. Em a lava. That is his name. For Nico's sake and Tennessee fans, his name is Em a lava. Nico. All right, okay. bottom line that's, for Tennessee. I don't think that's right. By the way. <laughs> I don't care what it is. By the way, Tennessee, I um, I think their O-line, a lot of people have questioned, but you have Mays, you have heard, your front seven, sick. James Pierce Jr. returns. Joe, they're going to be at six for me until I see a pulse in their secondary. I, I know your front seven's really good. I know offensively you're going to be good with fair, Nico. Your running, your running game's going to be good. But if you get torched and that secondary continues under high pool to get torched, you're not going to win football games when you play those premier programs. Joe, I, here's a hot take. I got Texas at number five. You have them at number three. 
Texas is not going to is going to be a borderline playoff team. I don't think they're going to come into this conference and compete for the SEC championship game. I, I disagree with you on that. I think that they've got a favorable schedule, but we're not. Put them at three, then. We're not. Well, I put them at three because I think they are going to contend for an SEC championship for the SEC championship game. I think that they and Ole Miss are going to be competing for that final spot. They are both good enough. And I look, I understand the concern about their secondary, but they also were aggressive in trying to bolster it through the portal. A lot of the young guys, underclassmen that had rough seasons last year, have another year under their belt. They, I will say, behind LSU. No, they have the third best offensive line in the conference because they'd probably go LSU, Georgia, and then I would go Texas. But the most important part, we have to lean into quarterbacks who have experience staying in offense with consistency in who's calling the plays for them. Isaiah Bond is going to be a great weapon for him, and they they might not have the two premier guys at the top that they had with A.D. Mitchell and Xavier Worthy. But we need to acknowledge that there is still going to be great offensive production. They're going to be good this year. They made it to the playoff. They almost beat Washington. We know how good they can be. You're replacing two premier guys at defensive tackle. Your secondary was Dookie Water. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot have games like Houston. Is Quinn Ewers going to make it an entire season, Joe? That, I, is, a, that is a fair question. I mean, that's it's a fair that's, question. And you know what? When I look at these teams, four, three, two, one, I've seen production from their quarterback play that's been better because availability is better better than ability. I've seen literally the team that they beat last year quarterback develop and get better and maybe added the biggest offensive mind and one of the biggest offensive minds in the game and Jalen Milrow. I don't think you're better than LSU. I don't think you're better than Alabama, Ole Miss. I don't think you're better than Georgia. I don't think they're walking into this, this league and running it. It's just not going to whoa, happen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because- I'm not painting this as them stepping in and running it, but how good they were last year. They look, Everyone lauded, and I think we even said on the show, they looked the part like an SEC team last year. They because absolutely they beat did. Bama, and that's why we put them there. But a, they didn't, a Bama team that literally the week after would struggle with USF on the road. They still went on to win fair the SEC you championship know that, that, You know that, that that Bama team got better as the year went on. It It did. It understandably did, but that Texas team still looked impressive in the Big 12 championship game and in the playoff, despite losing in the playoff. I'm not. I I, I need to see it for myself. Sorry, I'm going to need to see it for my. Got to see it for myself. Now, their okay. argument is, well, Missouri came to the conference and won the East. Joe, they don't have divisions. I think Georgia's coming in there and winning. I do. I think they're going to slip up along the way. I don't disagree with that. I think they slip up along the way to somebody in this conference they shouldn't lose to. Here's another one. I don't think they're better than Ole Miss. And for No, those, I don't think that they are. For those reasons alone, alone is why I have them where I have them. Because I don't I think you're you're not better than Ole Miss. I don't think you're better than Georgia. You don't play LSU. Okay, you don't play Bama, so I Flip whichever one you want. I put them at five. You put them at three. Two, th- three, four, five, flip whoever you want. I'm not having that argument with you. I just don't think that you're better than the two teams, the premier teams that you're going to play in this conference. And for that, I'm not, put, I'm not putting you in my top three. Joe, you have LSU at number five. I have them at number four. Your thoughts on the Tigers here? Yeah, I think that their secondary is going to be better. And we talked about this oh! in the preview. No, I said this in the I'm preview. I'm so fucking proud of you. I'm so I said this in the preview. No, hold you on. Stop why? it. Stop it. You know Stop why? it. Stop Can I tell it. you why? Because you actually listen and watch some of my stuff. I No, I don't. I, <laughs> I said this in the preview show that if I'm going to give Texas a secondary the benefit of the doubt with a bunch of young guys to improve, I absolutely am going to give the benefit of the doubt for that secondary improve. But y'all's defensive line didn't get better. It got worse. It got it got weaker. You put out three guys into the NFL, in the your three interior, best players yes. in the interior. I don't know what's going to happen up the middle. And that was such a problem. You were getting blown off the ball last year. And look, Blake Baker is going to do 
amazing great things for improving that defense and i think that this is going to be a more well-rounded team than last year it's not going to be putting up 50 points and then giving up 40 in order to win but there is just just too much concern in the middle of that defensive line and an important spot that requires dominant players to be in that upper echelon i think lsu makes the playoff when we do our playoff bracket but i i i can't i just can't get all the way there but then being top four Here's my thought on them. I'm probably going to talk about this at length to tonight. By the way, I, I just pushed my show back. So everybody okay. watching this, you're going to have to you're going to have to wait a minute. Joe, I think they're going to be so much more improved defensively. I know you're right. My concern for them is the interior of the off, uh, defensive line. So look, Brian Kelly has allowed us to be out there for practice. So I've gotten a pretty up close look and personal look at them. I think you're dead on on the secondary. We posted some stuff of Harold Perkins. Big question mark. Can he be in the inside? Somebody forgot to tell him that he's not a top premier player in this league. And, Joe, mm. I'm not sold that he can't move. I'm not so From what I've seen so far, through two weeks in a scrimmage, shit. Somebody forgot to tell him. I think that Blake Baker has used LSU's personnel – better than any defensive coordinator since Dave Aranda. Joe, I think the shit that they're going to throw out there has confused guys like Garrett Nussmeyer, okay, who we think is – who we've seen come in games and be pretty premier against really good defenses, a.k.a. Georgia. I take. They're going to go from the from the mid-110s uh, in total defense. They're going to be a top 55, top 60 defense. I can see that. I can totally okay? see that. Now – the reason they're going to be in the top 60, that's what's going to lose them football games. And who do they slip up to? What do they look like in week one? LSU's got to get the monkey off of their back. Can they beat USC week one? Because, Joe, if they do, their schedule's favorable enough for them to go 10-2. and And, Joe, mm -hmm. if they are 10-2, I, I, I mean, look, I put Bama and Ole Miss ahead of them. That's the two teams that they would play that would potentially beat them in the conference. So, we'll see. Speaking of Alabama, your thoughts on the Crimson Tide here? Uh, I'm all in on what Jalen Milrow is going to do this year with Kalen DeBoer leading the way. I know that you're a little skeptical on the secondary that they have. Their offensive line puts well, out – skeptical because Kalen DeBoer is skeptical because he came out in SEC media days and said, we got a lot of inexperience at the secondary. Okay. I, that's not my take. That's his okay. take. Okay. And, and at receiver too. That's – but – their offensive line's great. I think they're going to run the ball really freaking well. I'm just so caught up with how great Jalen Milrow looked in in the spring game. I, I am I'm willing to admit that I think that this kid is should be in the Heisman conversation and will be at some point this year because he's going to put up a ton of yards on the ground. He's going to put on put up some really big stats through the air. They will live and die by throwing the football. I would not be shocked if Alabama does not play similar to how they did at Washington, where they needed to outscore people. And I think they absolutely can, and they will outscore people. I don't know what they have at wide receiver. I I, I, I don't. And then Kalen DeBoer runs out there, and Saban asks him in SEC media days, hey, what area is struggling the most? And dude said our DB room. If that's the case, then Georgia and Ole Miss and LSU are going to torch you. That That's going to happen. And you may win the game. Joe, you're probably right. They could probably outscore some teams and win games. If your secondary is as bad as Kalen DeBoer said on SEC media days, not my take, his. Okay? I mean, he it was his – Joe, everybody asked him, what do you need to work at? To, to Where do you need to work at? Every single answer he gave at SEC media days was about their secondary. If that is true, okay, let's act mm. like it is for just a quick moment. Joe, LSU, Ole Miss, they're going to torture your ass. And that's the thing for me. Where do you play those games? You play LSU and Baton Rouge. You don't play Ole Miss. But you do have Georgia. Joe, you can't you're, – they're not beating them. They're not beating our number one team, the Georgia Bulldogs, at least not in my opinion. So it starts asking the question, Joe, I think they're going to be talented. I just do not do not know if they are going to be able to do it uh, – to, to get over that hump again. I, I don't know that. Yeah. No, it's – First year expectations should not be 
SEC uh, championship game. Ole Miss, though, we both had him at number two. I mean, I think that's a no-brainer. This is the most ridiculous roster that Ole Miss has had in a long time. Go ahead. (laughs) I feel like it's too hot of a take. Okay. Ole Miss has never played for the SEC championship. Ever. So it's hot for us to say that they would play it for the is, SEC championship? It is very, is very hot because they've never done it. They've never had a team this good. I would dis, I would debate that. I would I debate that. Those e- People forget how good that those Eli Manning teams were at times. Uh, you We forget those Houston Nut teams, the Dexter McCluster years, the the years with Hugh Freeze. Bro, those years with Hugh Freeze, they, they had some squads, uh, bro. I don't know, dude. I think that this this just well, the, the what they have with Prince Miyumami Allen and Walter Nolan, it, but more importantly, Jackson Dart. He's not better than Eli Manning, but he's better than Chad Kelly. I think that Jackson Dart is going to be so huge for their you success. Saw the, you saw the troll job them saying that Dart tore his ACL. Yeah, I saw so, someone drop that in the comments too. There's no, there's no. I would be mortified if he did. He is another guy who I think could totally be a Heisman sleeper. He is somebody that I've been banging the table for. Well, yeah, because he's been in, he's been in college football for like seven years now. He's not that old. He's on his fifth year. It's a joke. Okay. He's no, he's no Bo Nix. Um, Bo Nix might have won the Broncos job today. He looked okay. Mm. Um. <clears throat> Look, I think we we are – the reason we're giving Ole Miss the benefit of the doubt, I, I think, here, is because Lane has won 10 games in the SEC with less, right? Like, he's literally right. been a 10-win team with less talent. Now That's he where has, I'm coming from. He has that equal talent. That's where people are coming from. I think they, I think they get there. I think Lane is going to be the hottest commodity – Commodity coming out of the playoff, and I think Florida's going to throw 150 million at him. Number one, the George, yeah, oh yeah. All right, get the Georgia. <laughs> They're going to give him a 12 year, 150 million dollar contract. You watch, it's going to be, it's going to be ludicrous. You watch what I'm telling you. Right. Georgia, Florida ain't playing. Joe, we have the Georgia Bulldogs winning the SEC. Your thoughts on Kirby Smart and the Dogs? We said this in the pre- or in their preview, and we're going to repeat it again. No one is stopping this team. If they were good enough to be fifth in scoring offense last year, cycling in third, fourth string running backs and not having Lad McConkey and Brock Bowers and them banged up, watch what they're going to do this year. Don't ever they're deep. disrespect McConkey. No, no, no. I'm saying that when I know, he was, but I'm saying to everybody else, never. Yes. McConkey's the man. Their offensive production is going to go through the roof. Their run game is going to be extremely dominant, but most importantly, veteran quarterback who has a better support system and one of the best off second best offensive line in the conference. Defense loaded with future NFLers, uh, Malachi Starks, Michael Williams, first round picks. It, it couldn't be a better painted picture for a national championship. It just couldn't. Do they have the guys in the interior of that defensive line that will step up? Georgia has a very brutal schedule. And Joe, they could be 12 and 0, they can be 10 and 2. They could be 11 and 1. I think their floor is 10 and 2. I think the worst case scenario for them would be 10 and 2. I think worst case is 11 and 1. I don't think they go, they don't lose more than one game. I they would require okay, well, a serious slip up. No, I mean you got Texas, you got Ole Miss in there. I don't see them slipping up, man. I see maybe one possible Joe, one. Joe they're going to be tied with playing the most teams ranked in the SEC. The only other team that did that, LSU in 19. Sign me up. Sign me up. Well, I mean, then then they're going to be another historic team is what you're saying. Yeah, I could, I'm could. i willing okay. to put that on the table. I don't care. Okay, well, then they, they might, might as well be. How hungry will they be? How good would they be? Mm-hmm. I, I think they should have been in the playoffs last year. I still think they were talented enough to win a national championship last year. It's the most Nick Saban thing that we've seen. Of all of his, uh, his assistants that went elsewhere, the one that stayed with him the longest uh, is there. This video is sponsored by the online fitness training camp presented by Chris Gates Fitness. When I first started talking about Chris, 
about partnering with our show. Not only was I excited to have a fitness sponsor for our pod, but more importantly, when I found out about how he can help people achieve their goals, I was even more bought in because when the football season starts, it is so tough to stay on top of things and also to be able to enjoy yourself on Saturdays when it's game day. With Chris Gates Fitness's online training camp, you're going to be able to effectively stay focused, consistent, burn fat, build muscle, and do it with a like-minded community of individuals working towards the same thing. On top of this, you're going to be able to get direct coaching from Chris and the ability to ask him questions with an access to a live Q&A where you can get direct personalized support from Chris himself. Don't wait any longer. If you're trying to get in shape during this fall and you want to be able to do it with the right support system, head on over to chrisgatesfitness.com slash training camp or click the link in the description and you need to do it today because you can get the first month, personal training is expensive folks, the first month for only $10 when you use that code Rafino Joe. Don't wait any longer. Head on over there. That terrible way. Bet Online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing. Bet Online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V for 50% off your first deposit. That is a 50% welcome bonus. Bet Online, where the game starts.